a little bit growing back. Hi guys. Oh, not holding my doing a bit shaker breath. Hold. Hello. Okay. Um. Right. Time for a live. Don't really want to come on to be honest with you because of the red light therapy. I'm stopping myself making melatonin, but I'll do it in the service of myself and your learning and knowledge and let's advance um, in terms of information um, on fasting. Right, okay, so um, now I want to talk a little bit about fasting and bust a myth because I listen to a lot of podcasts a lot lately, a lot since I started podcasting two months ago. So I listen to a lot of information. I'm always collating information from health experts, picking and choosing what makes sense, what resonates, and then collapsing with what, what my own experiences show me and what I'm learning from people on Facebook and all this stuff. And one of them, you guys may be aware if you're big time into the health community or not, there's a guy called Matt Blackburn, who's kind of famous. He's famous, he's got a big following. He's the Divine Superconductor. Divine Superconductor TV is his channel on YouTube. Now, I respect the guy and I'm not trying to criticize. I am gonna blow apart his a silly little argument though against fasting, even though he's had experience with it. So I'm gonna, I'm literally gonna explain. It. I'd love someone to send this video to him too. I mean, he deleted me. Matt Blackburn deleted me off Facebook a while ago because I said urine therapy um, on one of his posts. He was talking about acid alkaline, saying acid's good for you. And I was just saying, oh, have you tried urine therapy? Or something to do with urine therapy. And he deleted me and said, it's not a good idea to drink the urine. And then deleted me. And I wasn't even being mean. I was just offering it a service. Anyway, this is, um, let's let's t talk about what he says and then set, and let's uh, discuss why he's wrong. So he says that um, he tried an experiment. I like him for trying a lot. He's a very, he's got a lot of good information. It's just this one thing has made me think, you know, he's done a lot of things. Last year he did six months, he six months of uh, what he called extreme. I don't think it's very extreme, but he called some. He did. Um, he did uh, one meal a day for six months last year. So not one meal a day for six months. Um, the Arum Ma Ra protocol, which he terms extreme. I don't think that's extreme. That's what I've been doing for um, two and a half years, um, and it's basically fasting. He says intermittent fasting. He's correct. So you're not eating food for twenty three hours. It's basically fasting over and over and over again. Now it's very powerful. It's almost like long term fasting when we do a long one. When we do a 23 hour one every day, it's very powerful the one meal a day. Anyway, his problem and issue with it is he thinks that we need to eat food constantly and he says that it's dangerous. His, his, his words, he says that he's kind of right in a point, but he's wrong about most things uh, regarding fasting anyway. He says that fasting increases stress levels and he says that's bad um, when cortisol and adrenaline get raised. That's bad. Yes, that's true. It does happen with fasting, but I'll explain a bit why that's not true. And anyway, he's. I was just listening to it and thinking, uh, and he was saying that people, he, he made some kind of points to make me think, like, he said that fasting is like a high, and he said the reason why fasting is a high is because your cortisol is eating your autography, autography, he's right, so he says your cortisol is eating your your muscles and um, taking out all the crap, and yeah, it is, that's why it's good, Matthew, Matt Blackburn, it's removing all the crap from the muscles and the body, that have been stored for 10, 20 years. Even he said this, he didn't admit it. He said that, oh, it removes toxins from the body fasting that takes, you know, stored from the body from 10, 20 years ago when we we're children, when we we're eating poofers, which Matt Blackburn's big on, good on him. You know, um, hydrogenated fat oils and poofers, polysaturated, you know, like rapeseed oil. And he seems to think that vegetables and fruits are high in poofers, so don't eat a vegan diet. He's very against veganism now. It's, it's fucking crazy. I mean, he's done veganism now, he's completely against it. And because um, of poofers and, um, Anyway, he's, yes, fasting is a high, hmm. but why is fasting a high? And first of all, let me, let me readdress the issue of, um, uh, of high cortisol adrenaline. This is true. High cortisol and high adrenaline is raised and provable by blood samples when you do either one meal a day or longer terms of fasts. But what he doesn't seem to understand, or maybe I need to chat to him about this, is that it's counterbalanced in a yin-yang system of you've got high stress on the one hand, but then... What happens with fasting, even short-term intermittent fasting, one meal a day, um, you get a parasympathetic action, and this is shown to us by a couple of things. I can prove that fasting is activating the parasympathetic, you know, the sympathetic fight or flight, you know, the cortisol raise shit, and then there's parasympathetic, and the parasympathetic gets activated in fasting, and I can prove it very easily. Away. You d um, they've done studies, and people that have do fasting, either intermittent or especially long fasting, the heart rate variability goes up. Yeah, do you guys know what heart rate variability is? It means your heart 
has an ability to change depending on the situation. So if, you're, if you have a, sh a short-term stress, the heart rate goes up, and then as soon as the stress goes, you relax. That's good heart rate variability. A very strong heart has a very healthy parasympathetic action, has a very high, 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 high heart rate variability. Very low heart variability is very unhealthy, and that's when the bark goes boom, 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 and it can't change. The heart needs to be variable. So when we fast, fucking proven by science, Matt Blackburn, um, heart rate variability goes up. So in other words, we become better at handling stress in our lives. We become relaxed. When the heart rate variability is happy, that's very powerful. The vagal tone goes up, the vagus nerve. Holy shit, does the vagus nerve get activated when you do fasting, especially for two, three days of water fasting, to the point where you can sometimes feel like a heartbeat in your, I feel a heartbeat in my tummy. That's the, that's the vagal nerve, of which the vagal nerve starts in the brain, the eyes, and goes all the way down to the tummy. There's a huge amount of vagal nerve connections in the gut. Um, when I do long-term fasting, you can feel the heartbeat of the gut, the vagus nerve getting activated majorly. Fasting is one of the best ways to activate the vagus nerve. The vagus nerve is the nerve of compassion, this other name. It's also called the Buddha nerve. So fasting activates the nerve of compassion, and Buddha nerve, that's the opposite of stress. You can't be compassionate and Buddha when you're stressful. Wakey, wakey, Mr. Blackburn. Yes, I'm having a go at you, mate. <laughs> I fucking love you, bro, but you need to wake up. Yeah, and I know you're never going to see this. This is for you guys, just so you know. In case you get lost with the Matt Blackburn crowd of fasting is bad for you, you know, and diet is everything, so which is where he seems to be heading at the moment. Also, another thing you can prove that fasting, either be intermittent for quite a while or long-term fasting is good for you, what you'll notice is if you understand Butieko's work, you understand, um, I talk a little bit about it. I wish more people talked about breaths per minute. You know, the yogis talked about um, getting their breath rate down from um, 16 to 18, which is currently the average of people that have long-term chronic diseases. Look into Butieko's work, look into Dr. Artur Rakhimov on YouTube, that, um, who said that, and it's very true, I like this quote of him, and Butieko found out in the 60s, 100% of people with chronic diseases have high breathing. And that means they're breathing fast and shallow, and it means 16 to 18 breaths per minute, or a lot, like way too much, 14, 16, 18, 20. They all have something in common, chronic diseases. The lower, the slower the breath, the more deeper and slower, you know, six to ten, ideally, the more healthy you are. Well, you can tell how many you're doing. You can do a controlled pause. You can hold your breath on an exhale when you're in a relaxed state and see how long you can hold your breath. How long you hold your breath is an indicator of how much oxygen in your system. And it's also an indicator of how slow your breathing is. If you can't hold your breath for 10, 20 seconds, fuck me, you're, you're due for a disease. You can sort that shit out, though, so there's hope. Um, but if you don't... Um, if you hold your breath for 20 seconds, it's okay. 30 seconds, yeah, yeah, yeah. 40 seconds, fucking superb. 60 seconds, fucking. The longer you hold the breath, the healthier you are, basically. And the shh, the less breaths per minute you are. What you'll notice if you do an experiment, a map look, bone, you should be doing You should know better, bro. You should fucking know about this shit. Yeah, you know a fuck more than me, but not on this basic beauty echo shit. Breath holding. The the longer you can hold your breath, the more healthy you are. That means the shh, the slower your breathing is outside and you're just normal waking life, right? And the slower your breathing is, the more healthy you are. And what I found in experiments, and so so many people on Facebook, all my friends on you on Facebook that talk about this, what, you know, when I post, when I see it uh, on the Butchego stuff, is you can hold. This is it. Listen to this. This is how simple this. How simple this. You, you can hold your breath longer when you're fasted state. On an empty tummy, breath work becomes more powerful. We know this. On an empty tummy, deeper in the fasted state, we get high, and we, our breath slows down. That's why we get high. Because we're purifying the system, the breath slows down, less oxygen is required. When we fast, oh, another thing, when we fast, the metabolic rate, the rate at which we consume oxygen, goes down majorly. So that's why we get cold when we go into a long fast. Sometimes we'll get cold. Is that a bad thing? No. You've just extended your life because the lower your metabolic rate, the, longer, the less oxygen you're consuming on a day-to-day -day basis, the longer you will live. Huh. Yeah, fasting's bad, Matt Blackburn, because it's going to make you live longer. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I actually heard on the interview him kind of disbelieving a little bit that people can heal themselves. He was like, oh, I'm open-minded, but it's emotion. He was saying stuff like, um, <laughs> that it's more to do with people's belief in fasting that makes them heal from diseases. When the other the interviewer was saying, you know, trying to be nice, saying, well, people people are healed from diseases. And, you know, I've heard these stories like, yeah, well, because, you know, it's more emotional. No, 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 sir. It's actual physical autography, autography, increased vagal tone, increased heart rate variability, uh, increase your body's capacity to remove toxins from the body, lowering a meto metabolic rate. You're using less oxygen. You're purifying your system. Your deep, your chakra system is getting cleansed. Your food causes fucking disease. At the end of the day, yes, some food 
food sufferers, but at the end of the day, all food slow down and kill you. You know, this is fucking basic shit. I, like I said, I don't know a lot compared to Mr. Mac that I burn, but what I do know is fucking simple shit. And what I've just na nailed in this video with heart rate ability, vagal tone, with breath work, with the rate at which you breathe when you fast, these are just simple shit that prove, and also the high you get from it, are just simple stuff. We all know it's godly. I mean, look at you're gonna diss Gandhi for ten days of, um, of, of of all the fasting that that man's done and the wisdom that is contained. Are you gonna diss Paul Bragg? Is that all nonsense? Um, that all religions, even though you've got quotes from Muhammad, you've got quotes from Buddha about fasting, you've got quotes from Jesus about fasting. Are we just to diss all this and say, oh, do you know, there's no link between fasting and health and spirituality and feeling your best self, and it's all a high because your body's consuming muscle and it's not real and, you know, it's very dangerous and eating one meal a day is very extreme. <laughs> Fuck me, wait till they, they know about preferentism too, but for them that must be fucking impossible and extreme. Yeah, I'm, I'm not saying preferentism is possible either, but if they think one meal a day for six, me six months is hardcore, fucking hell, I worry. Anyway, that was it, jumping on. Now, there is a lot of information to learn from people, and I don't want to have a go at Matt Blackbourne, because he knows far more than me, but at this one, which is key foundational, fasting, you are wrong, bro. And um, maybe it's because uh, I think that he's going too much, people are going too much, he's got such a great brain, I admire him, but he's getting too complicated with, um, you know, um, vitamins and minerals and enzymes he takes and all this shit, when it's just so fucking simple. It's so fucking simple, and there's no money in fasting. And, you know, what a shame that, that people... That I really admire, um, have great, uh, not n have great ambitions, and really want to help people that are so against and so dogmatic, and even tried it for themselves. That's the worst. People that have tried it for themselves and somehow come away from that experience, rationalizing that fasting is very dangerous and stressful, and not understanding the science, um, the basic science, and not listening to other people, and just blocking their ears like a little child. They're going like, oh, don't want to hear what they're saying, and fucking off on their own journey, and saying, oh, I tried fasting, it wasn't for me. I tried vegan. It wasn't for me. That's another one he tried that he failed at. And, um, you know, now it's all about eating ice creams before bed. And <laughs> it's fucking crazy what I was hearing. So, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, I hope you got some value from... Oh, good question. Well, let's get to the question quickly. Yes, Dean. Yes, creation. Empty, the, empty yourself and purify yourself as Jesus. Or whatever. If you don't believe it, that's cool. But spirituality and fasting is a huge link. How, why are we to this, this Muhammad? Um, but, um... Muslims, um, Sikhs fast, um, uh, every, gee, Christians, it's really important to purify the body. Anyway, how do you balance it, bro? Oh, good question. Do both. <laughs> I, 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 I do both. Um, I've been off Wim Hof, um, to, came back again recently. Now I'm on it again, but I've always done Bucieco with breath hold, exhale, um, exhales every single morning, every single evening. Now I do both. And how do you understand, how do they work? It, okay, I'll answer this quickly and then I'll go. The reason why um, they both, because I remember um, Sean, someone posted me about this, which one, which is right, Wim Hof or Butieko? Let me tell you from my knowledge and understanding why it works. Because Butieko breath slows the breath down. You deprive yourself of oxygen for a long period of time, that, that slows your breath down. But controlled ventilation, Wim Hof does too. So, um, why? Because when you breathe consciously controlled rapidly, at the end of the end result of that is slower breaths. So if you do Wim Hof controlled hyperventilation, also Kapal Bhati is some kind of controlled hyperventilation when you're going, <laughs> um, so is um, Bastrika, you're forcing the breath, your breath is going faster than normal. When you do a practice like that pranayama that does breath faster than normal, like those three Wim Hof um, and stuff, the breath um, comes back slower. The whole point of both of those Wim Hof Butieko is that the end result is the same. The breath slows down after the practice. The joy comes after the practice. It feels good too during, especially in Wim Hof. It feels fucking great. They both do. But I mean, the point of them is to slow the breath down permanently for, you know, a good few hours, for 24 hours really, depending on how long you do them. Um, they, the whole point is to slow the breath down. And the key to health is to slow the breath down um, outside of your health practices. And that's exactly what those both do. So they'll take it down. If you were 14 breaths per minute, you did Wim Hof and Butchieko every day, you'd probably go down to 11 to 12. Then you do some other health protocols and you go down to 10, 9. It's how it works. Yeah? So that's the key to health, slowing the breath down. An absolute fucking key to health. It lowers the metabolism. It gives you a high. You're gonna, your brain's going to get a brain high. Your body's functioning on less. You've got more energy, ironically, the slower your breath, the, the faster. You feel, I talk fast for a fucking reason, guys. It's because my breath. Do you think I've talked fast like this all the time? Hell no. 
should have seen me 11 years ago. Like, when I was probably at like 20 breaths per minute, really stressed and depressed, you know, and stress, stress causes um, the breaths to increase. Plus, people are eating shit, not caring about their health, and then there's stress that's from not living the wrong lifestyle, not happy, not worked on their emotional health, doing shit jobs they don't like, increases stress, and stress makes the, the breathing gait, and then they've got um, partners or relationships, and they're not getting on well with people, and, you know, and friends are stabbing them, and it just increases and stuff, so, yeah, yeah, Carl, uh, ice cream's for bed, that's what I heard. Um, <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Matt Blackburn's absolutely obsessed with food. Um, it's crazy shit. I'm not saying he's wrong, but there's some. Cr he's eating stuff before bed. I mean, this just it goes against the the laws of nature, and you don't you don't feed yourself for a start. For a start, I'm going all over the place. Sorry, guys. I'm I'm ten, sending this all over the place. For a start, I'll tell you one thing that is provable by science that it's really bad to eat anything, even fruits. Although that's not too bad. Any food you eat before bed, or as soon as the sun goes down, what that's going to do is, for number one, it's going to stop your your production of the most important nighttime. Most, one of the most important hormone, hormones you make in your body, period, is melatonin. It's one of the most important hormones. I'll tell you why. Anti-cancer, major antioxidant, major anti-de-aging, um, and it's also, because it's a majorly powerful antioxidant, it's also, um, what's the word for it? It goes through the cell. It's, it's, it's a special antioxidant because it's um, water-soluble and it's fat-soluble. Most antioxidants, all other antioxidants, either from food you produce, aren't both. Both and melatonin is fat soluble and water soluble. I'll tell you why that's important because it's designed to get into the mitochondria. So it fits in through the water, the blood, and then it goes past the fat soluble membrane of the mitochondria and it heals the mitochondria. Mitochondrial diseases. Mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cells, which is the, the base root level of all diseases. I mean, one way of looking at it you fix your mitochondria, you fix your health, you get yourself loads of energy. It produces loads of energy for us. And nature's designed it for us to fix mitochondrial damage which is going on in all of us because we live in poison environments and you know we do shit wrong all the time it, it, it's designed one way a major major source of way the major most important way to fix mitochondria is melatonin production at night that can with sleep that's why sleep's so important i mean sleep's important for a reason a million reasons one of them is melatonin production it needs to be high it needs to be high at night time one of the key reasons why people get disease is because they're not making any melatonin at night time and that is because they're eating foods before bed or even when the sun goes down that will stop science studies show time and time again you won't produce any melatonin if you eat something it just won't yeah and that's what he's recommend he's not he's, he's doing it i mean how can you not understand that one he needs to look into basic shit like that too um yeah anyway that's a bit side chatting yes or oh, free diving cold cold therapy i can talk about that one too anyway hope you got some value and um just to recap and to know Intermittent fasting, um, 14, 16 hours is definitely not dangerous. One meal a day is very powerful and can be lifelong. I've, I have done my own experience. It's very, very possible to eat one meal a day and be fucking healthy and happy. And then, of course, in my belief, also, you can do long-term fasting, of which I might point out, and I've said this a million times, last November I did 7.5 days, no food, no water, and no touching water, called a hard dry fast. And, if I'm being honest, I could have gone longer, and I felt fucking fine. I came into it very healthy. I was drinking a lot of age urine before. But that 7.5 days without food or water, I'm very aware of what my vessel is capable of. Because what my vessel is capable of, so is yours. So I'm not saying Breferian, maybe. My point is that long-term fasting, even past 24 hours a day, 24 hours, like two, three days water fast, 10 days water fast, 20 days water fast. Do I think that is dangerous? Uh, five days, seven days, dry fast, nine days. Do I think that's dangerous? No, I don't. And I come from it from a science point of view, but also mainly I come from it from an experience of view because my experiences and my experiences of my friends on here, you guys, shows me that that's not dangerous at all. And it's the way that I feel the best. So, anyway, uh, I read your comment, Jeff. And I go, fast. Good man. Yeah, meditation and um, fasting, very powerful to do periodically. Keep the intermittent dry fasting and then do a longer one every now and again. So, three days. Yeah, yeah, very good. Yes, yeah, so and there we go. I'm not surprised you don't get sick because of that stuff. I think food causes diseases and obsessing over what you're eating and then eating wrong and then not forgiving yourself and going, oh shit, I've eaten a lot of crappy food. Sometimes it's probably better to be just a normal person, eat crappy food and um, not think about it too much. However, you'll still get a disease. I mean, just saying, you still might get a disease and you still do from not, you know, knowing you're eating bad foods, just not caring. 
I'm just saying that sometimes in the health community we get too obsessed with food and then that sends us into disease. Not everyone's like that. I just know there's a few people that I'm watching that, um, uh, every now and again that do that. But I'm not, and I do think that food does cause disease majorly, but it's more to do with timings. And like Matt Blackburn doesn't seem to be aware of, like eating anything before bed is one reason why people get diseases, definitely, because you're not producing melatonin, which is your rescue bliss fucking healing hormone at sleep time. If you don't produce hormone at sleep time because you're eating something at night time just before bed, you are fucking stupid. And I'm not saying he won't get disease because he's doing a lot of protocols outside of that. But to be advising people to eat f foods before bedtime and to go against nature, think about it. We were, there was no lights on like, after dark outside for their ancestors. You might have had a fire, but as soon as the lights were off, we had no lights and bulbs to talk on like, he, like I'm doing now. And we didn't have time to eat food at night because there was no fucking light. You know, it's just why are we doing this? So it goes against nature. When the sun's up, then you eat. And also... If you want to go a bit further than that, the best time to eat is when the sun is highest in the sky. Um, for a lot of reasons which I've talked about in many videos that I won't bore you today. So, Alright, peace. Good man. Shiloh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Do both if you can. Um, I, I, I can't tell you which one's more powerful. I love them. Um, the, the breath work exercises are fucking brilliant. So, yeah, just speed the breath up. Slow it down is pushing the limits of your body, which makes it slower regularly. What we do know is we do want uh, slower breaths and not quicker breaths. Um, uh, quicker breaths with Wim Hof breathing, yes, because that brings the breath to slowness, and that's all good. Yeah, Amanda, nice one. Twenty-one days. Yeah, you didn't die, huh? You didn't get like uh, get very dangerous. This fasting business, isn't it? Snake is nice. I think that's urine in that. Okay, right. Thank you. <sighs> Appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching. And um, yeah, keep fasting your way to health. And by the way, my next not my next book. I'm th I'm my fifth or sixth one is going to be all about fasting. Um, it's, I'm going to call it fasting, the fastest way to health. So I'm going to do a little book on, uh, not a major piece, because I don't know too much, but I'm going to do a lot more research on fasting. And also, of course, my own experimentations too. I'm going to do another long uh, dry fast. And uh, yeah, I, I really do think it's the key foundational piece to health. Um, just entering, letting nothing enter your body. And that does speak a lot about the power of food, because when we don't put things in our body, we seem to get very high and happy and healthy. So that must imply that food even good food is slowing our vessel down somewhat and it's just making us heavy and dense and um, fasting is very powerful so mm. god bless all right peace and uh, ciao